Today we're talking about money, 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 money. As it is written in Isaiah the prophet, look, I am sending my messenger ahead of you who will prepare your way. Welcome to Branch Together, your channel for community Bible reading and devotions every weekday here on YouTube. My name is Darren. I'm a local pastor, and if you're just joining us, well, this is a fun journey for us to read the Bible together and interact as Christians. If you want to subscribe, you can do so right here on YouTube. Just hit the subscribe button and then hit the bell so you get notices each day when we release a new video. Uh, you can also text the word TOGETHER to the number 21,000. That's 21,000 to get a daily message from us with a link to a free video right here. Before we read today, and every day, we, uh, we always stop to ask the ultimate author of the Bible to be with us as we read his word. Let's do that now. Lord, thank you for your word. Thank you for the opportunity we have. We have Bibles in so many languages. Wherever we are in the world, we we have access to your Holy Scripture. We're thankful for that. God, help us to not take it for granted that, that your word is, is so accessible to us. God, we believe that you still speak today through your word. And we pray that you speak to us today as we're walking through this letter to the Corinthians from Paul, who was a pastor that cared deeply about them. Lord, challenge us and shape us, mold us as we continue to read your word. Amen. 2 Corinthians chapter 9. Now concerning the ministry to the saints, it is unnecessary for me to write to you, for I know your eagerness and I boast about you to the Macedonians. Achaia has been ready since last year, and your zeal has stirred up most of them. But I am sending the brothers so that our boasting about you in this matter would not prove empty, and so that you would be ready just as I said. Otherwise, if any Macedonians come with me and find you unprepared, we, not to mention you, would be put to shame in that situation. Therefore, I considered it necessary to urge the brothers to go on ahead of you and arrange in advance the generous gift you promised, so that it will be ready as a gift and not an extortion. The point is this. The person who sows sparingly will also reap sparingly, and the person who sows generously will also reap generously. Each person should do as he has decided in his heart, not reluctantly or out of compulsion, since God loves a cheerful giver. And God is able to make every grace overflow to you, so that in every way, always having everything you need, you may excel in every good work. As it is written, He distributed freely, He gave to the poor, His righteousness endures forever. Now the one who provides seed for the sower and bread for food will also provide and multiply your seed and increase the harvest of your righteousness. You will be enriched, enriched in every way for all generosity, which produces thanksgiving to God through us. For the ministry of this service is not only supplying the needs of the saints, but is also overflowing in many expressions of thanks to God. Because of the proof provided by this ministry, they will glorify God for your obedient confession of the gospel of Christ and your generosity in sharing with them and with everyone. And as they pray on your behalf, they will have deep affection for you because of the surpassing grace of God in you. Thanks be to God for his indescribable gift. The thing I like about reading through big chunks of the Bible is that you can't just cherry pick the sections you want and ignore the rest. For instance, I might never teach on generosity because I know that a lot of people, uh, people my age and younger, complain that churches are always asking for money. And some churches do spend a bit too much time uh, focusing on the finances, particularly if they feel like 
they're in stress trying to make the money they need to pay their bills and such. They tend to focus on that. But the bottom line is that the work of the ministry needs resources. And we, you and I, and everybody that is uh, committed to Christ, we are the church and we are called to share in that need and to do our part in giving. So Jared talked about it yesterday because it went along with the text. That was what was in the text talking about giving. Uh, And today, yet again, uh, Paul's talking about giving and generosity. So we can't ignore it. So let's look at verses uh, six and seven. He he says, uh, and I love this. He starts off by saying, the point is this. And I personally love when authors of the Bible tell us, you know, hey, buddy, now here's the point. Like, this is what we're talking about. It makes life so much uh, simpler for us as readers 2,000 years later. So he tells us that the point is that the person who sows sparingly, a little bit, will also reap sparingly. But the person who sows generously will reap generously. This is an unmistakable biblical principle. Be generous and you will reap much. Now, I don't think it's appropriate for us to say, uh, uh, to challenge people to to give $100 to their church and then say, uh, well, you're going to get back more of that $100 in your bank account if you give $100 today. That's the wrong idea. I don't don't think that's the type of economy God wants us to look at. Instead, I, I think our posture as a Christian should be one of generosity in all things. And when we cheerfully take that position, God is pleased and we find favor in him and our lives are filled with blessings. Yes, some of them are financial, but many of the blessings from God are absolutely intangible. They're not things you can count with a bank account or a ledger statement. Let me tell you a quick story. I grew up in a home where my dad worked really hard for us, and but he never made a ton of money. But what he earned, he gave faithfully from that. He always tithed and he always gave to, to the church uh, out of what he earned. By standards where I live in New Jersey, we didn't grow up wealthy. Now, compared to some parts of the world, we were certainly wealthy. Uh, I know there's many that grew up with with it much harder than we had. We uh, we had everything we needed. And I don't mean to belittle that if you're in a part of the world where you don't have uh, very much resources at all. But where we grew up compared to those around us, we were not wealthy. Uh, but my parents gave out of what they had, uh, and, and they were always willing to be generous. And that faithfulness, my, my family's faithfulness to God I believe with all my heart that it paid off in blessings that were so much greater and so much more valuable than money or finances could ever be. It reminds me of this old song from the early years of this band, Audio Adrenaline. The singer's talking about his family and like his dad, uh, like my dad, his dad was a pastor at one point. And uh, the song says, 20 years ago, I watched as my dad drove up the driveway, more than proud to have a brand new family car, 30 miles to the gallon, zero to 60 sometimes. I remember putting down the back seat and lying in the hatchback, looking at the sky, watching tears, watching the trees go by, not tears go by. Uh, I was the son of a preacher and he was a rich, poor man. And then the chorus is, no AC, no AC, and no FM. (laughs) It's a good song. And no regrets in my Chevette. That's the song. Uh, So he's in a cheap car, no AC, no FM. uh, But he was the son of a rich, poor man. Uh, That's how I felt growing up. My parents were faithful with what they had. And in many ways, we were rich. And I've always connected with that song because it reminds me of my childhood. We never drove new cars, ever. Uh, And we were the kids getting pulled up to a school where everybody else had fancy cars and and we had older cars. But in many ways, we were rich. I'm going to close with this verse. Uh, Paul says that each person should do as he has decided in his heart. It's in verse 7. Not reluctantly out of compulsion 
since God loves a cheerful giver. Our attitudes as Christians, as people that want to follow Jesus, should be one of generosity, and we should be thankful for the opportunity we have to give. If, if you're a believer, you should be giving to your church, period. I want you to hear that. Wherever you are in a church body, you should be giving there. And you should be asking God to show you what it looks like to give sacrificially, to give from what you have. If you don't trust the way your church spends money, I think you should go to your elders and talk to them about it and work it out because you should be giving there. And then after that, um, there's nonprofits and charities. And I, I believe they're second because I believe the local church is God's primary means to do the work of his kingdom in this world. So after you give there, um, uh, there's many other places, many nonprofits and charities and good places that you can give to. And uh, look at where needs are that connect with your heart that you think are valuable, important. Many, many of you have asked me uh, how you can give to this channel because what we're doing here is a ministry. And I keep telling you, it's coming soon. We're working on it. Um, since, since I'm an engineer full-time and a pastor uh, as a volunteer and a YouTube channel host as a volunteer, um, some of these details take us a little while. But I promise it's coming and uh, I will have a, a platform. We're setting up a, a crowdfunding platform on a uh, a website called CrowdRise. It's it's owned by GoFundMe. So we're almost done with that. Uh, it's coming soon. And Jared and I don't make any money here. We don't take any money from this, but we do foot the bill for running this channel, which ends up being hundreds of dollars a month uh, out of the pocket of our church and us personally um, to, to do that. So there will be a chance for you to give to that sometime in soon, but that's not what we're talking about now. Uh, so please consider today where God's calling you to give now, uh, primarily your local church and what other ways and be generous and do it cheerfully. He has given us so much. It's a privilege to have anything to give away ourselves. All right. That's all for today. We'll see you all tomorrow right here on BT. <laughs> uh, and, and by the way, the thumbnail was a poster of when I was in college and my band opened up for audio adrenaline. Uh, that was a fun season of my life. Not that important. All right. Bye.